Each chapter, Mr. Bear will tell you a story about one of us. Tell you a story all about a stork. I'll have to keep an eye on those two youngsters or they'll wind up getting themselves in a whole mess of trouble. They're fish, not birds. In due course, the dry season came to the valley and the lake gradually dried up, leaving only a few ponds here and there. restricted natural habitat. It's a great pity, indeed. You're so lucky you can fly. Yes, and from up there, I can see the whole valley. 
what about all the other lakes and rivers? Are they drying up too, like ours? Oh, goodness me, no, not at all. Nothing like it. There's a lake quite nearby that's just brimming over with water. Do you really mean that, Mrs. Stork? Why, absolutely. It's hundreds of times bigger than this little puddle. I don't trust that stork, not for a second. Go tell Grandfather Pike. Right away, sir. Grandfather Pike! Grandfather Pike! There's trouble up on the surface, sir. What's up there? A stork! Even flying low and slow, it doesn't take more than two minutes to get there. You go warn everyone to stay clear of him. Hurry! Dang it. Stop right there. Don't go near the surface while the stork's around or it'll be the end of you. Go tell everyone else. Hurry! Huh? Right away, Grandfather Pike. You too, youngin. But all the stork was doing was promising to take us to a bigger lake. What's so dangerous about that, Grandfather Pike? He wants to eat you, kid. Haven't you got that through your thick skull yet? Sir! Sir! The stork has captured Ferdinand! Oh, that's what I was afraid of. I knew not to trust that bird. It's a technique he and his kind have always used with you youngsters still dry behind the gills. That's right. They're the sneakiest creatures that ever flew over the earth. The only thing they're after is filling up their bellies with as many foolish fish as they can catch. Well, young'un, now you know the kind of foe you're facing. All I can say is be prepared. Yes, Grandfather. We're to stay away from the surface and avoid the stork at all costs. Sir, we need to do something to counter this perilous situation. I have a plan in mind. It's a bit risky, but it might save many fishy lives. Here I am, children. Who wants to be next? He's back, sir. I'm going to put my plan into action, or with your approval, of course. Good luck. Where are you? I can't wait around all day, you know. Here I am, Mr. Stork. Everyone wanted to go, so we drew lots, and I got the lucky number. Hmm, let's see. It won't be easy for me to fly carrying you in my beak. Oh, please, Mr. Stork. I'm not all that big. I'm a lot lighter than lots of fish. Please don't leave me here, I beg you. I want to go to that beautiful big lake, too. Please. Oh, all right. Let's go. Oh, thank you, thank you! see any lake. Let go of my beak. No way. I'm warning you, if you don't let go, you'll be sorry. I'll be sorry you ever got involved with my pincers, you lying, treacherous monster. And they all miss you. He's back! 
All right, who wants to be next? Form a line. Here I am. Listen, he's got crab claw marks all over his neck, and he's captured Mr. Kim Crab. We have to find a way to get rid of him. the others. A volunteer. Quiet, you. Well, are you ready to join your friends, little one? I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Swallow any poor trusting fish right now, you rapacious monster! Someone get him off me! Get away from here as fast as you can! If I don't save the poor little darling, this miserable puddle they live in will dry up and they'll all die! I've got to get them to the big lake right away! Right, you shameless liar! The only place you want to get them is down inside your big fat stomach! <laughs> It's raining! The dry season's over! This is no game. This is life. Ferdinand is never coming back. Now, I hope you've learned to stay away from storks. Oh, yes, I have. Truly, truly, I have. I'll never let one near me again. In the name of all of us here in the lake, I thank you for your heroic actions, Mr. King Crab, sir. Thanks to you, we can go back to living our normal lives in peace and tranquility. Not only that, but you've provided a valuable lesson in survival for our young folk. Over here for a minute. Hi, bossy hard things. I need your help. Well, just say the Whatever word. Whatever it is, I guarantee that I can do it better. Good, good, good. Oh, cat's just a cat. You can't rely on her. Except when strong, like me. My feline agility solves any problem at all. And I'm unbeatable in anything that has to do with water. You all seem to be super qualified. 
Hold on. I'll give you a demonstration of my talents. No, I get dizzy. Web feet can't climb trees. <laughs> well, what do you An think? An extraordinary exhibition, I must admit. Watch what I can do in the water. Quack, quack, quack! demonstrations. I'll bet all of you could find what I need. A peach. My metabolism's been yearning for one all day. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> Here you 
Mark, we brought you three peaches. You've learned what it means to work together, haven't you? The stork. How is the stork classified in the animal kingdom? The stork is a bird belonging to the order Siconiformes and to the family Siconidae. They are large with big bodies and long, thin legs. How many species are there and where do they live? There are more than 15 known species, the best known being the white stork, which lives in Europe, West and East Asia and North Africa. How do they live? Storks, alone or mated for life, live and nest in tall trees and buildings. They prefer plains or swampy areas close to humans. How does it move? The stork's bearing is very dignified. It maintains a most elegant demeanor even when at absolute rest. They can walk for many hours and are also tireless flyers capable of enduring extremely long migrations each year. What do they eat? Storks eat every type of animal, especially frogs, mice and insects. But they're also very fond of fish and of the eggs of ground-nesting birds. How do they protect themselves? Storks can become extremely aggressive when they're disturbed and will not hesitate to use their powerful beaks to attack. How do they relate to people? Usually very well. In fact, in popular tradition, the stork has always symbolized happiness and good luck. Can they live in the city? Storks love to live near humans, but not in the large urban centers. They prefer homes in the country to those in the city, even better when surrounded by areas of grass and trees. Well, have you all learned the lesson? <laughs> the moral of the story is that an offer for help can sometimes have an ulterior motive. <laughs> Oh, look who's coming! <laughs>